So up next we have Thomas Kadanak. Yeah. yeah, all right. Thomas Kadanak from California Institute of Technology. His field is applied in computational mathematics, and his advisor is Jim Beck. He did his practicum at Los Alamos National Laboratory. Thank you, Tom. Great, thank you very much. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how, uh, about Bayesian inference and then discuss new algorithms that we're developing for solving these Bayesian inference problems by formulating them as simulating a dynamical system. Uh, so just as motivation, uh, so Bayesian methods are used uh, for lots of identification and estimation problems. And they're very critical because they allow us to really quantify how robust our estimates are. So the most important thing about the Bayesian framework, so we can think of it as probability distributions, quantify our uncertainty about um, an estimate, and we can use, um, so then with that, we can say that our uncertainty is not just any sort of inherent randomness, but also more generally our own lack of knowledge about a system. So they're really appropriate when looking at like system identification problems where the parameter of a dynamical system isn't something that's inherently random. So the computational intensity of Bayesian inference is really limited by how MCMC, how efficiently we can do MCMC Markov chain Monte Carlo. Um, and so I'll discuss how we can use ideas from dynamical systems to formulate this inference problem as solving a dynamical system. So just kind of as more inspiration of why this is very important when doing inference for physical systems, which is the area I work on. Um, if you have some physical system, um, in this example, I'll be talking about a structural dynamics um, of a, a building. And that, that's going to produce data that we're measuring. And there's lots of things that we're interested in estimating on different time scales. You'd be interested in estimating the, the dynamic state of that building. Um, then also on longer time scales, the actual parameters that define that, the building structural model and also inferring the model itself. And once we have this a probability distribution that captures our uncertainty about all these different things, then we can propagate that through this kind of workflow to really design good control actions and do a quantified uh, an uncertainty quantification to make sure that we have a good idea of how this building is going to perform in the future, subject to something like an earthquake, and whether we need to take some sort of control actions to mitigate possible damage that could happen to that system. So the Bayesian inference problem on the surface seems like a fairly easy problem to solve. You have some prior distribution that represents your current understanding of the system. And so this is a probability distribution over these sets of just parameters um, that we can parameterize the distribution by. And then given new observations, we want to use Bayes' theorem to calculate the posterior distribution, which is an updated distribution that reflects this new knowledge once we've integrated this new information. So this updating really just takes the form instead of Bayes' theorem, which is just multiplication, really. So it seems like it should be super, super easy. But unfortunately, calculating this normalization constant here is completely intractable. You have to solve a, a, a high-dimensional integral over your space, which would be impossible for most situations. Plus, integrating these distributions uh, would be incredibly difficult. And so. Instead, what people do is generate samples from that posterior distribution. And then we can use, um, you know, like central limit theorem, law of large numbers to make good estimates and have an idea of how those estimates reflect some quantity that we're interested in with respect to that posterior. So this is called robust um, estimation. But in reality, we can't even draw independent samples from this posterior distribution because we don't have a way to, to sample it because most sampling techniques would require computing this normalization constant. Um, so instead, what we're using are, is developing a Markov chain that has a stationary distribution that is the posterior distribution. So with the Markov chain, you start at some state um, here, just, just on the Markov chain, and then you're deciding a new, a new state to move to based upon some proposal distribution, um, which we call like a kernel. Um, and that will generate a series of correlated samples that, as I said, have the posterior distribution that we're interested in sampling. Uh, and because it's correlated now, we need to have an idea of how to estimate what is our actual number of effective samples. And from this, 
we can use an effective sample size calculation to, to do that, which is one of the most common methods where you're looking at the autocorrelation function of your, of your Markov chain samples. So within MCMC, we're interested in designing this kernel, which is the transition um, probability of moving from one state to another. Um, and we want this Markov chain to have properties that basically we want its convergence to be very fast to stationary distribution so that if you start it in any point in space, you want it to, to, to quickly converge to sampling from that, that stationary distribution. And once it's in the stationary distribution, we want to have it such that the correlation between samples is very low, which means that your effective sample size then won't be high. And um, when we're designing this Markov chain, we're kind of constrained by the fact that we want the stationary distribution to be our posterior distribution that we get from Bayesian inference. And to do this, we need to ensure that we respect detailed balance, which ensures that you, know, you have reversibility of the Markov chain, which means that that posterior distribution is, gonna is a stationary state of your Markov chain. And then we also need ergodicity to make sure it's the only stationary state of your Markov chain. So as you evolve it, you'll, you're ins you ensure that you get into that stationary distribution, which again is the posterior that you're interested in sampling. So some of the techniques that have been developed for designing these kernels or proposed distributions rely on dynamical systems. So one of the, the kind of most powerful techniques is Hamiltonian Monte Carlo hybrid Monte Carlo, which was developed in, in um, physics to sample these, to do these samplings. And it basically says that you can relate probability and a Hamiltonian or energy function. So basically, you where pi is your posterior distribution that you're interested in sampling, you can say that's the potential energy of some dynamical system. Um, and so with that potential energy, then you can add a kinetic energy term, which is just Gaussian. So you're adding some additional variables here, which are the momentum. And from that, you're creating a dynamical system. And um, so the most common form here is where you have, um, do not have any position dependence of your momentum term um, because that makes simulating this way, way easier and more computationally efficient. However, Riemannian um, HMC is also um, common, particularly on high dimensional problems, uh, because this can really exploit structure and it's, it's really great. But um, as I said, since you have a position dependence here in your, in your potential, in, in your potential, in your, in, sorry, in your kinetic energy um, term, it's, it makes integrating it much more difficult. Um, and the great thing about using these Hamiltonian systems is that along trajectories, they conserve energy. So again, energy we're relating with probability. And so when you make a proposal using this, as you evolve, if you make a proposal which is basically evolving your current state along some trajectory, that state is gonna conserve probability along that trajectory, so it's a high acceptance probability within, within MCMC. Um, and so we can get much, much higher efficiencies by using these types of ideas. Um, so taking this and move, um, moving away from a deterministic system, we, we develop a stochastic differential equation that describes these dynamics, which has its stationary distribution as the posterior that we're interested in sampling. So where H is one of those Hamiltonians from the previous slide, um, this system has a stationary distribution with the Boltzmann-Gibbs distribution. And so if we then marginalize um, out the momentum, the stationary distribution is going to sample our posterior, which is really great. Um, and what's interesting is that this system is a combination of these, of the Hamiltonian dynamics, um, which gets these nice coherent trajectories that are able to kind of efficiently move through space and as I conserve probabilities, and an ornstein uhlenbeck process, which is like, kind of like a damped random walk. So in this, by doing this, you're kind of com combining the a diffusion and this nice coherent exploration of the, of the state space. And so you can get much higher efficiencies by doing this. Um, and then what we're interested in is kind of how we select parameters, this, this dampening uh, matrix C, and then also the, that um, mass matrix that goes into the Hamiltonian, the M, which defines kind of the Gaussian distribution that your momentum uh, is coming from. Um, and when solving this numerically, because uh, we're integrating an SD that presents some challenges, 
Um, but we can solve this one using string splitting, where basically you divide it into two different integrators, one that's stochastic and integrates the stochastic part of the differential equation, the other one which is deterministic to integrate the Hamiltonian equation. So, so this first integrator integrates the system half the time step according to the einstein ullenbeck process, which for um, the kind of easy Hamiltonian is, we can be done exactly. Um, and then the second one would be a deterministic integrator for a Hamiltonian system, which, you know, there's tons of them out there, so that's really easy to, to, to do. That's been well studied, um, finding those symplectic integrators. And then finally, for the remainder half a time step, then you reapply the stochastic integrator. Um, the challenge is then also how do you metropolize this to ensure that given the integration errors that you're getting from solving this stochastic differential equation, um, you get the right stationary distribution still. Um, and the cool thing is that the Hamiltonian dynamics are reversible. Well, they, they in themselves are not reversible. However, if you flip the momentum, they become reversible. So therefore, we can design a proposal distribution taking into account that momentum flip um, to make this system reversible and therefore get high acceptance rates and ensure the, all the nice properties. Um, I shall say, so if we don't metropolize, you can just simulate this SD and you get a good approximation to your solution anyway for Bayesian inference, which is what many people uh, have thought for some of these methods of how you can take these SDEs to, to approximate the solution. But by metropolize, we can again get the exact solution um, without much additional cost. Um, and so when designing the system, the first thing we can look at is find one where we can solve this exactly. So a nice Gaussian system um, with the Gaussian posterior produces a linear system. Um, and so then we can kind of look at the structure of this matrix and find it and kind of minimize the largest eigenvalue. So then that means that it has very low, um, it, we can reduce the, the correlation, uh, or sorry, the convergence. And um, by finding C, we C. And then for M, we want to align it with the inverse covariance, which is G, um, which basically means that you're kind of transforming your Gaussian into a standard Gaussian, so then all the kind of length scales are the same, um, which makes sampling it uh, more efficient. And so that will produce some less correlation. And then for nonlinear problems, um, we can locally linearize um, to find this damping matrix C uh, and by solving again this eigen problem by looking at the local linearization. And then um, for M, it's more challenging because that can't vary over, over position, um, else you're going to kind of run into some problems with um, making, the kind of making your um, MCMC algorithm satisfy the reversibility and ergodicity conditions unless you kind of do a lot of modifications. So it's better to just kind of um, run several tests bef before you do your actual sampling to kind of gauge what is a good choice for that. So again, we're trying to match this, the global structure, the global covariance structure of your posterior distribution. So by evolving your chain, you can kind of adaptively learn that over time before you settle in and start actually sampling. So when you're in the burn-in stage, when you're still trying to converge to the stationary distribution, you don't really care if you're satisfying these conditions for MCNC as much. You're just interested in converging and getting good parameters, so you can kind of adapt, do your adaptation during that burn-in period before settling in and start um, actually doing your sampling where you need to fix things like this, this mass matrix M. So as an example, um, there's, this is just kind of a simple structural model that we've worked on um, where you have some ground acceleration that's exciting a building, and you want to infer the structure of that building using the floor output, uh, the floor acceleration, um, uh, the output is the floor accelerations which you're getting from accelerometers. And um, this, this model is fairly simple, um, but it's a dynamical system, so actually kind of calculating a likelihood for this is itself challenging, and then taking derivatives of that, that likelihood is very challenging. With things, tools like automatic differentiation, though, we can now finally do these types of problems um, very nicely. And so, kind of just, this is the correlation between many of the parameters that we're estimating. And the, the important thing to take from this is that this, the colors represent four different chains in this that we kind of evolved in parallel. And we can see that they basically get the same 
distribution um, within these histograms. They're all sampling about the same um, posterior. So we can see that there's no bias. And so we're not getting trapped anywhere. And then we are actually getting full coverage of the posterior distribution, getting high effective sample sizes too. So within this problem, uh, there in the stationary distribution, there are 8,000 samples that we took. And our minimum effective sample size was 1,700. And our mean effective sample size was I believe about 3,000. So that's very high efficiencies for MCMC algorithms in terms of getting for effective sample sizes. Um, a very interesting trade-off that we observe is when we look at the effective sample size of different quantities, one is the states themselves up here, and this is the min and the mean. Um, and um, this was, these were done over 1,000 uh, posterior samples. Um, and then the energy also. The energy itself is interesting because for a Gaussian problem, that energy kind of is a, um, can tell us how much error there is in your, in your um, or how, kind of is a measure of the variance in the covariance matrix. So basically, um, high effective energy samples means that you're going to get a good handle on the variance, and high posterior samples for the states mean you're going to get a good, good estimate of the mean. So we can see that um, in terms of how we're selecting different parameters, Optimizing for sampling the mean will often get you poor estimates of the, the error uh, and the variance. So um, in the future, basically, we want to integrate more ideas from dynamical systems. Since we are so much work on simulating dynamical systems and doing controlling dynamical systems, we can now apply all those ideas to MCMC and really getting some really uh, good results. And then also, since we have a dynamical system, the idea is can we do filtering? Instead, um, to get online Bayesian inference, which is one of the, one of the very kind of hard questions that, that we'd like to do. So uh, thank you to um, my advisor in Caltech and Los Alamos, where I did my practicum, which is very helpful. And the Krellenstein and the Department of Energy for providing this fellowship. It's been immensely powerful in um, shaping my academic career. So thanks.